And we'll start right now with a statement from uh, Fourth Judicial District Attorney Dan. Day. Good afternoon. As you know, today we held a preliminary hearing all day. What a preliminary hearing is, is for us to present a summary of the evidence and for the judge to decide if there's probable cause to bind any charges over for trial. And there was a second purpose that he had to decide whether he would set a bond today. Part of what he had to decide is whether the evidence, we have a term in Colorado called whether the evidence, there was proof evident or presumption great. And if the judge found those, then he sets a no bond. If he strictly just finds probable cause but doesn't believe the evidence uh, is evident or the presumption great uh, in terms of his conviction, then the judge will set a bond. So that's what we had the all-day hearing on today. We presented two witnesses primarily. Uh, we just ended a little while ago. As you know, the court has bound over on all six felony counts. The court has bound over on two counts of first-degree murder, one count of tampering with a deceased human being, one count, or excuse me, three counts of solicitation for first-degree murder. The court then went on to decide whether the, the ev evidence was, the proof was evident and the presumption was great, and he found that as to every single count. So he did not set a bond, and he will stay in jail uh, with no bond pending trial. With that, I'll turn it over to... Thank you. I would like to summarize a little bit of the evidence that you heard today. As is obvious to all of you, the acoustics can be very poor in the courtroom. So to just give you a summary of what evidence was presented today, uh, there were two witnesses that testified, Commander Christopher Adams from the Woodland Park Police Department and also Agent Greg Slater with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. They summarized the efforts that all of these agencies have undertaken to first try to find Kelsey, and then when it became very obvious to law enforcement that, Kel that Kelsey was deceased, the efforts that they went through to try and find out what happened and who was the murderer of Kelsey. As we heard today, we heard evidence that Patrick Frazee contacted Crystal Lee in Idaho on three separate occasions had her come to Colorado to murder Kelsey on September 23rd, October 15th, and October 21st. Crystal told investigators that Patrick first in September asked that Crystal put poison or something in the Starbucks coffee, give that to Kelsey so that Kelsey would no longer be a problem. Then, when that didn't work and Patrick was angry with Crystal, he then, on October 15th, had, had Crystal come back to Colorado, provided her with a pipe by which Crystal was to strike Kelsey, killing her. And when that didn't work, Patrick then solicited Kelsey, uh, Crystal again to come back on October 21st with a baseball bat to kill Kelsey. Crystal tells investigators that she did not comply with any of those. And at the last time when she was here on October 21st, she sat and said, I can't do this, and tells Patrick, I can't do this. And then we hear from Michelle Stein that there's a phone call on October 22nd where Crystal is very upset and says she's done. Crystal then tells us that on October, I'm sorry, November 22nd, Thanksgiving, Patrick kills Kelsey in a horrific manner with a bat in the back of the head as Kelsey is sniffing candles with a blindfold over her eyes. Crystal tells us that Patrick then calls her after he has put Kelsey in a black plastic tote, calls Crystal to come out and help him clean up. She does not come out that day. She cannot come out that day, but she does come out on October 24th. And as Crystal describes, when she walks into Kelsey's condo, the scene is horrific. There's blood everywhere. There are bloody footprints everywhere. And Crystal cleans up blood, but leaves behind 
some telltale evidence for our investigators to find. That's a brief summary of the facts that we have heard here today. Um, I think we are going to take some questions. Why do you oh, oh. Call police? A couple other comments. I will say the next court date is April 8th at 8.30 for arraignment. You should keep in mind that no matter what the judge ruled today, no matter what we're saying uh, at this moment, he is absolutely presumed innocent unless until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, he will on uh, the 8th of April set for him to enter a plea in this case. The defense asked for a continuance based on the uh, voluminous discovery that they even got today. The investigation is still ongoing, and that's why we set the April 8th date. And with that, we'll open it up to questions. Why didn't Crystal call police at any time in this investigation? Certainly, that was a question that was asked today. Did she call police? Um, uh, it is not one that was answered on the record. You know, we are constrained that we can only talk about what was put on the record the record on any particular day that was not put in the record uh, why she did not but certainly the question was asked and a uh, natural question uh, that anybody would have can you talk a little bit about the charges that crystal might and is uh, is facing in light of the fact that she did a lot more than just use this cell phone i mean she potentially could have saved her life is she getting off easy on this Certainly, the, uh, she took a plea uh, just a little while ago that's in the public record so everybody can see that. Uh, they can, you heard testimony today and certainly know one of the questions today is we wouldn't even know where the murder happened in the apartment even, which room or where it happened at all without her testimony. That was one of the questions elicited at the law enforcement today. Uh, you've heard her cooperation, the information she provided, uh, how much we knew and how much she actually provided to us. I think any member of the public or yourselves can measure uh, whether her, what, what, what is, could potentially happen to her is appropriate or fair or right, uh, but certainly you've also heard through court and everybody can opine based on the facts she'll put out there of what she has provided law enforcement. Uh, uh, you asked a little bit about potential charges. Uh, you can have your own, I know most of you have your own uh, um, uh, legal advisors, experts who can advise on things. Certainly if you're looking at a attempted murder count, it has right in the Colorado statute that if you abandon it, that is a defense uh, to uh, attempted murder. Uh, you heard the evidence today of the three times, and uh, each time uh, she did abandon it. Uh, but that's something you can ask your legal advisors of. Certainly on the counts of solicitation, she's not the one soliciting. You would charge the person who's actually soliciting for that, not necessarily the person that they've solicited uh, in terms of that. If that explains at least some of the charges that may be going through your mind. Yeah, but you it's a fair it. question. It's a fair thing for the uh, community to measure. Sorry about that. You guys relied obviously heavily upon Crystal Kenny's interviews and testimony. You know, Are you worried about that moving forward, seeing as it's just kind of he said, she said in this? I'm not going to comment on the evidence. There was a voluminous amount of evidence today. There's a lot for the public and for you even to digest. I heard some of the reporters even say there's a lot for us to digest today. I think you heard a lot of evidence we put in even beforehand uh, in terms of cell towers and things like that. Um, but that's, uh, uh, and quite frankly, this is a, preliminary stage. It is a summary of the evidence at this point. It is not a trial. We anticipate the trial will be set some months from now. Have you found any evidence at local landfills? In, uh, the investigation is ongoing. I think as uh, District Attorney May mentioned that this is an ongoing criminal investigation. Uh, I believe that you heard testimony from uh, Agent Greg Slater about what evidence has been or has not been recovered from any landfills, but this is an ongoing criminal investigation. Can you clarify, have any landfills actually been searched? Um, I believe some people have asked uh, Lee Richards about that, our PIO, and I think she's indicated that she'll get information out in the future. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to say on that. I'm looking at the chief of police over there. The, um, uh, so any, there is no further information to give out at this time. Can you clarify something you said at the end of the trial, uh, or the, today's hearing? Um, you mentioned the baby, Kaylee, and you said she was in a bouncer. Can you tell us what, was she in the room when the murder happened, or was she in a separate room? What was the evidence of that today? I think, I believe that the evidence that was presented today was that Kaylee was in the back room of Kelsey's condo 
when Kelsey was murdered. That back bedroom, I think, was described by Agent Slater as being back behind the kitchen area. As you walked into the condo, you walk in, there's the living room on the right, there's the kitchen on your left, and that back room is up, is kind of tucked behind and down the hallway behind the kitchen. So Agent Slater uh, discussed um, and testified that that walker or bouncer was in that back room, which is tucked kind of back behind the kitchen. With no body, what kind of a challenge is this going to be moving forward, seeing that all you have really at this point is, is uh, corroborating what Crystal said, and Patrick's obviously going to have his story. If there's, How important is it to find a body now or some remnant of Crystal? I mean, that's Again, I, uh, I don't believe I'm allowed ethically to comment on, on my beliefs of strengths of certain pieces of evidence or not, so it's not a question I can answer at this time. Was this considered hearsay, and would it be considered hearsay in a trial? It, what, is what, what considered hearsay? Is that considered hearsay in a trial? Would, would the same weight be given to her testimony sure. in trial? That, that's that kind of talking about the procedure today. Preliminary hearing is a preliminary stage, and so the rules of evidence do not apply to a preliminary hearing. So you can admit all kinds of hearsay in a preliminary hearing. So, for instance, she did not testify today. The agent got on the stand and said, here's what she told me, which is something you're allowed to do at a preliminary hearing. You can't do that at a trial. At a trial, you actually have to present the witnesses, and they have to testify about what they personally know. It, in a general sense, for those of you who have been at trials, I mean, there's a certain amount of hearsay. So this is a different kind of hearing. Yes, a lot of what was put in today was hearsay. Um, that would not be the case at a trial. So Kelsey's neighbor's surveillance system did have photos or video of Patrick Frazee and Kelsey and her daughter at different times. Did it not ever pick up Crystal Lee at the door or um, Patrick Frazee that day coming and going around the time of the alleged murder? Uh, the investigators testified at the hearing today that they did not find any um, still photographs from the Arlo security system from the neighbor of Crystal Lee on the 24th. Um, they also did not find any still images from the Arlo security system on, I believe, the 25th either. Um, I think that it was described, my understanding of how it was testified to and how it was described is that those still images come to that witness's email. And so if she looked at it, that email, that image is going to be on there. So that's how those images were recovered. We heard a lot of evidence today about the alleged murder, what you believe happened. What do you believe was the motive? Um, again, uh, we did not really put on uh, much motive information today. <clears throat> In order to prove the elements of any one of the charges, uh, actually motive is not an element that we have to prove, so it's not something we would have necessarily addressed at preliminary hearing. Can you clarify that the way investigators found Crystal was through phone records? And that's what he said. Um, yes, I believe that when um, I think it was through Commander Adams as well as Agent Slater that Crystal Lee was found via phone records, that when they looked at Patrick's cell phone records for the date of November 22nd, they saw two calls right around 4.30 p.m. on Thanksgiving. One call was to Patrick's mother and the other call was to that 208 area code phone number, which they later determined to be Crystal Lee. Why should we believe uh, Crystal when she says that she left some blood or some DNA behind for police to find and that she kept her phone on and Kelsey's phone on so that it would look like they were traveling together and law enforcement would, would come and find her? Why should we believe that um, given that she lied to, FBI, to the FBI when they first contacted her? Again, I'm, my personal beliefs are uh, not something I can talk about at this time, and so that's not a question I'm going to be able to answer. Um, all I'm going to talk about today is the facts that came out in court. You're seeing us pause a little bit because certainly we know more information than just what came out in court. We need to make sure we're talking about what came out in court today, um, and so that's not something that was really gone into today, nor am I going to give my own personal opinions. Can you give us a quick summary as to uh, Sheila Frazee's appearance in court today and how vital her testimony will be in the future of this trial? Uh, in light of everything that happened on Sheila Frazee's appearance in court today, I'm going to leave that for the record. Uh, I believe almost every news agency, if you all, all weren't in there, you were. Uh, almost all of you, or I would assume all of you were in there. 
Um, so I'm going to leave uh, what happened with her today uh, for the record and what you saw. That's open for you to comment or write about or uh, do a story on. It's clear that some evidence was missed initially by investigators in Kelsey Barrett's home, some of this blood splatter. What is the general feeling about that being missed? And to your point, how thankful are you to Kelsey Barrett's family for finding that and pointing it out? Um, interestingly, uh, you're talking about the toilet, uh, the blood on the toilet that um, wasn't found until, I believe it was December 6th, um, uh, uh, was the testimony today, and it was Kelsey's mom, or excuse me, Kelsey's brother who found it. What happened is Kelsey's mother and brother came into town looking for her, um, that um, uh, the, they had moved into the house and sometime early morning hours found the blood on the toilet. I guess the only other thing you noticed is the person who was cleaning up the scene missed it too. Um, uh, so there is a certain fortunate uh, the fortuitousness for the uh, law enforcement. Yes, law enforcement did not see it when they went in there on the 4th, um, nor, did, uh, um, uh, nor, nor did the person cleaning up the scene see it uh, on the 24th. And uh, luckily for everybody, I guess the brother did see it on the 6th. Problematic though that the scene was likely contaminated by investigators coming and going, her family coming and going. I mean, it doesn't exactly scream, you know, a, a, a perfectly sealed off crime scene. Um, I guess I've dealt with a lot of crime scenes. You have them at different stages. You have some crime scenes that are pretty pristine found immediately, some that are found later. Um, you deal with the issues of what you deal with on every crime scene, whether it's a crime scene that uh, actually we've had crime scenes that we found years later. Um, and so, again, you uh, try to gather the evidence that you have at that, um, and that's what we look at. Should investigators have been more thorough initially? Um, you can comment on that. You, you, you can have an opinion on that as easily well, as I can. You, yeah. Uh, what do you yeah. Think? Um, you know, as, as I say, uh, it's unfortunate that the investigators missed it uh, when they were in there on the 4th. Uh, at the same time, it's fortunate that the person cleaning up the scene missed it on the 24th. Um, so it's, it's kind of a two-edged sword there that uh, uh, two people inspecting that property very closely uh, both missed it. What? The blood on the toilet wasn't part of the blood that... Crystal said she left on purpose, right? There was no testimony to that fact today. She did. There was testimony of certain blood that was left there, but not that blood. Was there evidence found in Patrick Brazy's truck blood, or did the cadaver dog ever hit on his truck? Uh, there was no testimony today about um, what was found in Pat Patrick Brazy's truck, so I don't feel that I can comment on that. Do you know I, I will say defense asked the question, did they find anything on his scene, right, uh, in his truck that was taken from the scene, and the answer was no. Do you know definitively where, what was left of, of Kelsey's body, whether it ended up in a landfill more likely or ended up in the river? That all the testimony was today uh, that um, um, the testimony was that he uh, uh, told Crystal Lee that uh, he was thinking about disposing it either in a landfill or in a river, and that's as much as it came out in testimony today. How hard is it that, that there was really no, no one was really looking for Kelsey seriously until December 2nd, it's like 12 days? Would it have made a difference to you as you build a case if, if, um, if someone would have realized that she was gone on the 25th? How would this have been different if, if there were 12 days in between the time she went missing and the time people really started getting serious about looking for her? Um, I'm not going to comment on that at this time. And, and quite frankly, it's kind of speculative. Her question was if, if she was reported missing to the law enforcement on December 2nd, so that's when they started their investigation. Had she been reported earlier, uh, you, the number you gave is November 25th. Uh, would it have made a difference in the investigation? And, again, that, that's asking for speculation. Thank you. Well, we're gonna Did you consider charging Crystal with anything more than just evidence tampering, given that she was there when the body was disposed of or burned? Or did she went to the house three times and maybe for potentially to murder uh, Kelsey? Uh, I've made some comments earlier, uh, and I'm, I'm going to stand on those comments and not uh, comment any further on that. Is there Thank any more so arrests that coming. could happen? from this case because it's still an ongoing investigation. That's not something that I'd be commenting on one way or the other. Um, your fellow prosecutor. You your name and how you spell it, please, on camera. Ready. Yes, my name is Jennifer Veeman, 